Being processed and moving. Yeah. So our peppers are done. And they're not hot, uh -uh. but both of us just got in a sneezing fit. It's like still got it in your nose kind yeah. of thing. Like, I mean, you can eat them and they're not hot. Like the heat has left, but some like form of it. It's I don't even know how to explain it. It's like vapors again. Not, it's yeah. not vapors. It's just something tickling your nose. Woo. Open that. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. I think you disturb it. <coughs> <laughs> you got it going. Oh. I'm just gonna put it in here with this. Okay. Oh my god, I can't breathe. Yeah, it's bad. Yeah. Oh. So it's not really making it like completely powder because I'm just using this chopper, not a food processor. But there is, some is powder, and the other is like flakes. Like red pepper flakes. But they're cayenne flakes. I'm dying over like, here. Oh, that's hard thought. Yeah, I'm yeah. dying. I don't know, but I'm dying. Mm -hmm. It looks like I stuck with it right up my nose. Yeah. Ah. My eyes are watering. It's gotta be those. Wow. Thought. My nose is burning. I can't breathe. <coughs> <coughs> Licking, is it hot? No, I ain't licking it. I can barely, my nose is on fire and I haven't uh, touched anything. That is too. What do we do? Ah. Woo wee. <coughs> Why is there a jalapeno over here? I don't know. I can't breathe. I got to blow my nose. Oh my gosh. Oh, that's lethal. Yeah, it is. Close this thing back up. I ain't okay. I'm not here. Can you dump that so we can get this stuff out of here? No, no, no. That was probably not the best idea. Oh. There you have it. Oh. They about killed us. <laughs> but we got, what, one cup? Yeah. Um, from all those peppers. No, well, not the jalapenos. Right, right. Not the jalapenos we did. Uh, this is just the Sugar Rush Cayenne. Bananas and a few leftover jalapenos. It really shows you how many peppers you need. I mean, that was a lot of peppers. Four, that was more trays. peppers than most people grow. Right. I can't talk. I can't even <laughs> think about putting that on food right now because it's so far up my nose. <laughs> and it went down to that. But that's really cool. I'm excited about ah! it. I don't know if we'll use it, but ah! it's better than them getting a freezer burnt, I guess. <laughs> Give, I mean, we'll have to give that to an enemy. Woo. <laughs> It'll have to be uh, very watered down. Oh my gosh! Like very much just a sprinkle. Yeah, I just look like a one powder flake. Yes. <laughs> per meal. <laughs> <laughs> That's for a teaspoon of pepper flakes. We're done. One. Shoot. One pepper flake. This kitchen this feels lethal. Hey y'all, welcome to Stiver's Homestead. I'm Zach. And I'm Jim. And today you are going to learn how to pressure can pork butts. Yep. I, I didn't know if we were done roast or not. Mix. It's pork. Pork! <laughs> <laughs> okay, if you've been with our channel for a while, you know that this guy is brand new to us. If you're new, welcome to joining us together. So this is an all-American uh, 930 pressure canner. I had got it for Jen for her Christmas present. Um, but we, for the past five years, have used the Presto. So we have successfully uh, pressure canned out of our Presto for several years. Like I, I think it's the 23 quart. Yeah, the 23 quart one. Size. We can only do one level. We couldn't do yeah. a second level on ours. Um, we loved it, um, but our space was limited. I think we could only do what, like six or seven, seven quarts? Quart. Seven quarts. Um, and then I think maybe one extra pint, maybe, yeah. maybe eight. Um, and so we were, it was either getting to the points where we needed to buy another one of those so we could have two running or get something bigger. We're preserving so much food. We needed something that could handle more. And so this is a big purchase for the All-American, but we're, we're saying this just so you understand that you don't have to have this ginormous guy to be able to pressure can. This is something that we just needed to save up for and upgrade to because now we can do how many? Did we remember? I don't remember. It was a lot. It was a lot. 
lot. I think it's 19 pints, maybe? Nine, yeah, 19 pints, because we can double layer, and it's got a bigger cylinder in general, so it just holds so much more. Yeah. So we're able to over double what we do in one shot rather than having to do multiple process. So that's why we have this. Today you are going to learn on an All-American. Pretty much almost the exact same with the Presto, so don't worry which brand you have. Just know about the amount you can put in there. Ready to get this going? I am. All right, I have to go downstairs to get our uh, new lids. Thought I'd take you because I don't know last time any of y'all even seen the downstairs bedroom. So this is kind of why we don't take you down here so much. It's very, very dark, which is a good thing. But we have a lot of our veggies up in here on shelves and racks. Um, we've got our homemade wine, tinctures. We've got a lot of uh, buckets and then some totes over here with a bunch of different preserved food and everything. But I'm down here for these. You may hear some dog barking. We actually have a load of mulch being dropped off. So uh, I guess this is kind of a blessing in disguise. We have um, electrical lines that are on the back part of our property. And so every once in a while they have to come and do some trimmings and stuff. Well, I told the guys, especially since they're always on our property, like doing that stuff, we're the main line. If you have any of your tree trimmings that you get done, I'll take them. So they're always like in our area. If you're ever searching for property, uh, see if you have that like an easement, which is what we have. So there's like a right of way for these utility companies to get in there. Long story short, I told him I said, hey, we'll take all the trimmings that you have because we're a big gardener. So that's yeah. what they're doing. Usually an easement is like an inconvenience, but for us, it's working out pretty well. It's working out. Everybody's really nice. So <laughs> yeah. it's actually how we've got to know a lot of people. <laughs> it really is. There's just gas people, <laughs> internet people. It's just always somebody, it seems like. <laughs> Um, but anyways, we are now starting the pressure canning part. Well, prepping, I guess. So Jen, we're doing a raw pack. So she has put the raw meat in our hot jars. That was just one. So one of the pork, whatever it was. Pork butts. Pork butts filled up four pints. Four, no, five. Five. <laughs> <laughs> five pints. So we have several that we're going to be doing, so she's going to continue to do that. We are showing you how to do this. But do not take the words out of our mouth as the, the Bible here when it comes to pressure canning. Everybody kind of got their own flavor on how they do it. What you can do is follow your ball canning bug. This one, I don't even know, is this like an official? It's not a full one. Yeah, it, it's almost like a magazine, but yeah. this one's ball, uh, ball book for guide to preserving. It's got recipes in it. Um, so follow that. And then there's actually, we have the ball book. Um, I'll link it down below just so you know where it is. But you can follow that stuff step by step if you want. But this is the visual way to do it. So she's going to continue to cut. She's also cutting up a lot of the fat um, that's on a pork butt. And we're going to save that to probably render it down. So we got to get all that done. And then we'll get to the pressure can. So I have gotten about, I would say about three inches of water on the bottom. And started to warm up the canner to get ready. You want it to be nice and warm. Uh, there's a big thing. Even though you're putting raw meat, you have hot jars, hot canner. You don't want to do it all just fresh and cold. Um, first off, because this is going to take forever to warm up for you if you do that. Um, but you want it to kind of stay the same temperature all the way around. Um, that way you don't have any cracking. That was a lot of jars to fill up, wasn't it, babe? Yeah, a lot of cutting. A lot of cutting. Okay. So now that we got all of our jars packed, we are going to take a little towel with white vinegar on it. And we are going to clean the tops. A little bit of the sides. You do this to get any kind of debris off here. Any grease. <clears throat> any fat. grease fat, yeah. So when you put your lid on it, you won't have any issues with the ceiling. Anything in between that and the glass. All right, now Jen is putting the lids and the rings on and show them how, what you're doing on the next one so they understand. Uh, let me find this one. Okay. Put your lid, put your band, fingertip tight. And so fingertip tight there was the important piece. You don't want to <clears throat> crush it or anything, or you might actually have the seal bend and not work out well. Um, so just fingertip tight, even if it feels like it could go, mo go more. Okay, we're putting the jars in now. Sorry. We've got our rack on the bottom. Always make sure you've got your rack down there so that your jars aren't clinging to the bottom and bouncing around and hitting everything. We're going to get the bottom layer in and then we're going to put our rack on and stack the top.
Okay, this is American Pressure Canner specific. I read this in the manual um, when we opened it up. I wanted to make sure I knew everything we were supposed to do. It says to rub a little bit of olive oil on the bottom of that to help with the seal. So you put it in, and then it's got these little hooks that you'll see right there. So when you turn it, and that's lined up, the arrow to this little cut, those are underneath there so it would hit and now we're going to screw it on okay got it all locked down and all you want to do like the opposite so you want to do that one and this one and this one and this one that way it goes on level so now we haven't started just yet we have to let this vent for 10 minutes but we're going to wait um, until we have some steam coming out to start that 10 minute vent process once the venting's done then we'll put the weight on to get up to 10 pounds of pressure all right, you're not gonna really be able to, well, you can kind of see it. We have a pretty constant stream of steam coming out, so our 10 minute timer is now on for the 10 minute, 10 minute venting part. So one cool thing about the American pressure canner is you have one jiggler, which is your weight, but it actually has the different numbers on it, 10, 15, five. So depending on your elevation and what you need, um, we'll decipher on where you need to go. Again, this is I'm telling you this as a, a guide, but not as permanent. If you're 999 feet and below, you're 10 pounds. If you're above that, you're 15 pounds. I don't know what's five, to be honest with you. <laughs> Under sea? <laughs> Under sea level? Um, I don't know, but it's all about your elevation. So just Google that and you'll find it out. We are 10. We're right on the line. If we was up at the White House, our Airbnb yeah, would go 15. 15. Um, but we're on 10. And so set that right on there. And now here's what's going to happen. Now we're starting to build pressure. There's no longer a vent, it's building pressure up inside of here. You have this gauge that's right here, but you don't use that during the pressure canning process. You are trusting on your jiggler. We'll show you when it gets to this point, but we want a smooth jiggle. Not a rapid jiggle or anything on the lines of that. Uh, but we'll show you when we get there. But it's not going to move until pressure starts to build. Meanwhile, um, there was a couple of them that had bones. so. We got some of the meat off and now I am roasting them at 450. They're gonna roast for about an hour and those are gonna be boned off. So in this bottom bowl, I've got the rest of my pork meat that I'm gonna can when that round is done. This is all the fat that I'm gonna put in our turkey roaster and we're gonna render that down. And then here are the roasts. There was four roasts that I got all cut up and those are gonna go uh, either the second round or the third round. It just depends on how much this fills up, and then if that does not fill up enough pints, we are gonna do beans. So that's exciting. These have been in my freezer for a long time, and they need to get canned because we're clearing out the freezer. And yeah, you can put beans with meat. Um, it doesn't matter what you put together. I'm not putting the beans in the meat, but the jars will be in the canner together. Um, you can put anything together that takes the same amount of time. So that's why I'm gonna fill up the leftover ones with beans if there's no, um, if we have extra pints that we have to fill up. And that reminded me to tell you that for meat, it is 75 minutes for pints and 90 minutes for quarts. But you don't start that timer till you get to pressure. Okay, you just saw when you start your timer. So the reason I said don't trust the gauge real well, it does give you an idea of the pressure amount. It actually had to get over what that said was 10 for it to finally start in the jiggle. So for these, you want it to jiggle about one to four times per minute. That means you're about at the right pressure. You just don't want it to be straight chaos. That's what you don't want. But you can use the gauge as a helping, helping hand. Um, but as it starts getting going, you want to turn your, your heat down just a little bit. And after you do this a few times, you'll figure out where to go. But now our 90 or 75 minutes, because it's pints, has officially started. Okay, the pressure canner is still going, but my bones are done roasting. So we're gonna get those out. Oh gosh. Oh, that looks so good. good. <laughs> and there's gonna be, there's probably gonna be a lot of leftover meat. So yeah. we're not, we gotta waste that. We're yeah. gonna save that. We're gonna pull it off. And then I'll show you what we're gonna do next with that. And then all that fat I took off of all of the butts. The roast didn't have any fat, but the butts yeah, like from the shoulder said. Oh, yum. Um, I've got it in my crock pot. I put a little bit of water in the bottom. It's on warm. And that's going to render lard. That's the same way that I always do it, and it works really well. Um, and I've got like four quarts, I think, in the fridge. So this is going to add to that and be really good. All right. So that is all the meat that we picked off the bones. It's quite a lot. Um, we were kind of trying to figure out what we're going to do for dinner. So 
here it is. <laughs> it's going to be really good. It's really, really good meat. And now we've got our bones in this big turkey roaster. Um, we're going to fill it up with as much water as it takes to get pretty much to the top because it will reduce down some. And then we're going to add some spices. Okay, how about that? <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're putting our onion in. Um, you can add um, celery, carrots, more onions, whatever you want to do. We're in the pantry challenge, so I'm not trying to use our well, we don't even, actually we do have celery, but it's Wyatt's, so that's like his one thing he loves. Um, and I don't have any carrots, so I'm not going to go buy any, because we're in the pantry challenge. So now we're going to add some thyme. Add some garlic powder. Add some rosemary. And then some salt and pepper. Okay, now we're going to put it on 300 and we'll start with 24 hours and go from there. Caught her. Didn't even try to that time, but still caught her. Hopefully y'all can hear her over all the loud Oh my dances. God. Yeah, hey, that was you, babe. I didn't do anything. Wow. I was about to tell her because the timer is done and that means this is done. So all you got to do, turn it off. Turn your, your heat off and you're good to go. We got timers everywhere for all kinds of things going on. But yeah, <laughs> so you just turn the, the heat off and you can already tell the jiggler is already starting to die off uh, from there. But this is where your gauge really helps. You're gonna let it go all the way to zero. Give it another five or 10 minutes, uh, even at zero to really drop. We'll take our weight off and then we can open it up and get our beautiful jars out. What we get? We found some turkey eggs. So they've been laying for a long time now, probably six months. Um, but we don't know where they're laying. We found some in the greenhouse before. Those were no good because it was too long. Uh, these were found outside of the gate up top. I don't know why it wasn't private or secluded. Um, but I floated them and they're still good. So I don't want to hatch them because I don't know how long they've been out there. Should we eat them? I don't know if we should. Maybe even baking. I don't <laughs> Have y'all ever had turkey? Okay, we won't eat them until you tell us. Have you ever ate turkey eggs? Do people do, is that a thing? I know you eat duck eggs. Which we don't like. Makes yeah, we sick. don't like. I think we're both semi-allergic. Um, yeah, let us know and if we should try them or not. You ready? <laughs> so we, um, all the pressure got down and now we are gonna open it and pray a little prayer and hope for the best that everything is safe and not broken and all the things that you hope for when you can, but. Even more so when you use a new canner and you did stacking for the first time. We'll see. <laughs> Here we are. Boy. Okay, thank the Lord, all is well. Everyone did wonderful. Now we just wait for them to seal. I know it's ugly. If you've never canned meat before, don't be alarmed. Canned meat is just ugly, but it tastes wonderful. This is a lot of food. So that's nine, 18 jars, and we're about to put 18 more into the canner. That's our last round. So I had said that I was gonna do the beans if I didn't have enough meat to fill up all the jars, but we only have one room for one jar left, so there's no point in just doing one can of beans when I would have to open the bag and then reseal it. So. We're gonna get the tops on. We've already vinegared our rings. I'm uh, not our rings, our, well, I'm tired. <laughs> Jars. We've done, we've done all that. Okay, everything's done. <laughs> They're going back in the canner now. So some of you might not have caught our video, a few videos back where we talked about why we were doing this and etc. cetera. Um, so this just kind of jumped right into it. But we had five- Pork butts. Pork butts. Yeah. And four roasts. Both of those were from Butcher Box. We've had them in our freezer. We are just a small family of four that no longer host many big, gatherings. We, we don't need big meals. <laughs> yes. So T-Bone's coming. We knew that. We knew that he was going to the butcher. So this past week has been kind of a hustle to free up our freezers, get out produce that we grew last year, either freeze dry it or make it into breads, whatever it is. Right. Um, and then those roast and uh, butts. 
<laughs> we needed to free up space because they take up a lot of room in a freezer and yeah. we're trying to not use a bunch of freezer space because T-Bone's coming and we're gonna need it all. So we got all that out a few days ago, thawed it all out, and then decided to can it because that was the best option. Um, we can meat, not everybody does. It's not the same as when you just pull it and thaw it and eat it, um, but it is still really good. And these can be pulled out for sandwiches or stews. Nachos. Yeah, anything that you want to, and it's really good. Um, so, you know, when we do stuff, we try to use every single aspect of it. So not only did we can all of the meat, um, we then roasted the bones, which allowed us to pull meat off of those to be able to have for dinner. And then we put the bones in our turkey roaster to be able to make bone broth, which we will can. Bone broth. Bone broth. <laughs> when that's done stewing, we will make bone broth and we'll can it. And then we took the fat, because there was quite a bit of fat that we had to cut off. And now we're rendering that down for lard. Um, because we've talked about it before, when our cow's in milk, we use all of her milk to make all of our butter that we use. Butter's way better for you than oils. Uh, we're almost out of all that, so now we are moving to the lard that I rendered from Mama Pig. Um, but it's not a whole ton because she really wasn't that fatty. Right. And when that's done, now we'll have this lard that we can use, and that's really good. And this should get us right back into milking season. Yeah, and I don't even think we mentioned the fact that we're also freeze drying more eggs yeah. as all this is going on. Um, and then when the bones get done, some of our friends, the Max, they actually dehydrated their bones. It was chicken freeze bones. Dry. Free, freeze dried, chewy. <laughs> they long freeze dried <laughs> bones from their chicken carcasses to then turn into um, bone meal for their gardens. We might try that. I think so. I mean, I'm, I'm just curious because I, I just want to see how it works out. Yeah. So we'll definitely be freeze drying the bones. So, like she said, every single bit of that meat and that yeah. animal and all of it is going for different things that we need within yeah. our pantry. And we didn't show you, but we have two full grocery bags of eggshells. Because every time that we freeze dry eggs, we save all of our shells, we dry them, crush them up, put them in mason jars, and then we can use them in our garden or for the chickens, whichever we choose. It's just about using every single aspect of it and not yeah. wasting anything. Today was a long day. It's hard. It ain't our over yet. Hurt. It's over for you all, but it, ain't over, it so ain't over yet. Our feet are very sore, but it's worth it, and it feels really good to get this done. Yeah, it absolutely does. I'll give you a clip um, of all the jars once they're done. We won't walk you through doing the pressure can of this again. Um, the, the last thing I just wanted to add with you all is this can be scary. Pressure canning can be super scary, but I promise you it's not. And it's so simplistic when I mean, it wasn't. I was scared. <laughs> well, that's because it was a new canner, yeah. right? Like we knew, we are, I would say very, very experienced canners. Like we've done this a million times. We know what we're doing, but brand new canner, it like you, I'm questioning everything, yeah. right? But don't fear it. It's okay. Nowadays, most of the stuff has so many safety measures that it's going to keep you safe no matter what. Um, I've taken the vet or the weight off too soon yeah. without turning it off and letting it go down naturally. Nothing, died, nobody yeah. died. Nothing exploded. The house is fine. So just don't fear. Jump into it. Watch more videos. Get your ball canning book because that'll help you out. And read your manuals. Yep. Every canner is different. Yeah, absolutely. And then I just I did want to add that some of y'all might be thinking, why don't you freeze dry some of that meat? We will be in the future freeze drying some meat and trying that out as well. Um, this is just a perfect snack for us. And it's it's just, we really like canning meat. Right uh, now, the freeze dryer is going literally 24 seven, just trying to get last year's produce done. Yeah, uh, and sorry, a lot of people have asked about the electrical bill with the freeze dryer. Um, at least in what we're seeing in the bill, it's nothing more than a fridge mm -hmm. uh, on what it does. I am trying to find a gun though, to like that can tell me how much it's yeah. using so I can show you all. Um, but we are not seeing an increase in our electrical bill. And it good. literally goes all the time. All the time. As soon as it's done, we put something else in. Right. All right, y'all. We're exhausted. We hope you enjoyed today's video. If you haven't subscribed, make sure to down below. We got... It's just We're starting the year right. And I like it. And we want to take you all along with us. We love you. Until the next Bye. one. Bye.